Hi, thank you for joining this webinar session today. Uh, my name is uh, Choi. I'm a geotechnical engineer in Midas IT, and I'm in charge of our geotechnical user support and training. I'm happy to announce about our new series of online training, which is a case study webinar. I will carry out this training session based on the real project uh, done by our users. Today's project is a uh, sewer in North Woodland area in Singapore performed by CPG consultant company. Uh, this is project for developing the deep tunnel sewage uh, system. Personally, I worked in Singapore around five years uh, before the Midas. Uh, I was also aware of uh, this project. From now on, I am gonna project about how to utilize uh, GTS NX program for the excavation project for sewer in North Woodland area in Singapore. Uh, this is a description about the TSS project derived by the PUB, uh, which is Singapore government, uh, dealing with the utilities in Singapore. Uh, the deep tunnel storage system, uh, the TSS, is a superhighway for Singapore's used water management. And the TSS uses deep tunnels to convey used water entirely by gravity to three uh, centralized treatment plants uh, strategically located at coastal areas. The treated used water is uh, then reclaimed and further purified into new water uh, with excess effluent discharged to the sea in an environmentally responsive manner. When the entire <coughs> DTSS uh, is completed, uh, existing intermediate pumping station and conventional water reclamation plants uh, will be paced out. So uh, the location of CPG project is from north part of Singapore and this sewer will be connected to Changi Airport. The project full name is Proposed Sewer in North Woodland Area. As you can see on the screen, uh, there is a plan, plan view about retaining system for the shaft. And I'm importing this CAD file, uh, which is DWG format into GTS NX and start modeling for creating the geometry. Uh, from this analysis, you can get a settlement of ground, movement of DTSS tunnel, and dis displacement and forces such as uh, bending moment and shear force of the retaining wall. Uh, there are three layers of soil, uh, which will be considered for ground condition for this analysis. And these soil layers derived by borrow log data, uh, which is existing borrow log from soil investigation report. Uh, first layer is assumed by fear, and second is G5, the granite 5, and rest is G1. And I'm considering the properties from the GIBR, the ground interpretation baseline report, uh, which is from soil investigation report as well. And there are soil properties, as you can see on this screen. And soil material type is uh, maculum for every soils in this case. And you can see elastic modulus question and friction angle for each soil from this table. And this is a section view for the shaft. The retaining system for the shaft contains SBP wall uh, for the retaining wall, 1.2 meter diameter and 1.6 meter center to center, and 0.75 meter and 1.2 meter thickness of casing wall uh, 
uh, which is comprising of retaining wall. And there are circuit for rest part and considering lock bolt of 25 millimeter diameter as well. And you can find the structural properties here in this table. And I assume structural properties as an elastic material and give a reasonable values for elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. Okay, and I following the analysis steps as per the construction sequence, as you can see on the screen. And I will consider the existing DTS tunnel first and then construct the retaining wall. And next step, I will make the excavation and install the casing level by level. Uh, at the end, I will repeat those excavation and casing installation until the final excavation level. Uh, basically, the process of the analysis is same as the uh, same as the general FEM analysis. Uh, firstly, uh, create the geometry with uh, importing the CAT file and generate the mesh for the structures and the ground and define the construction stage and verify the result. Uh, let me open the GTS NX program and carry out the analysis process. Okay, so this is the one of drawing for the plan view. <coughs> so I'm using this drawing to import GTS NX. So I did make a simplify for this drawing, as you can see here, the CAD file. So I will import this CAD file to GTS NX. It's a DWG format. So when you open the GTS NX program, then you can see right this window. And when you click the new file here, so after you clicking this uh, new file, then you can see this window. And under the model type, you can choose 3D, 2D, and axis symmetry. So in this case, I will, I'm using 3D model type. At the beginning, I will import the existing properties from the other files. So under the mesh tab, go to property. Then you can find the import function here. and I'm using existing file and all, okay. So after you import, after I'm importing the property, then go to material. Uh, materials are automatically imported when you import the properties. So, when I check the fill layer, uh, as I said, it's uh, assumed by Moaculum's model type, and you can check uh, elastic modulus and voices ratio, unit weight, and under the nonlinear tab, you can check cohesion 
and frictional anger and others. And for the structural material, it's assumed by elastic model type and you need to check on the structure here. And you can check elastic modulus, uh, Poisson's ratio and unit weight. Okay, so as you can see on the working window here, uh, there is grid. You can draw on this face, uh, draw some lines or circle and rectangular on this line, but you can change the, this grid face according to this uh, coordinate system. So when you double click uh, under the model tab, the work plane tree, double click this one, then the grid phase will be changed the plan. So I will start with the XY plane here. And next I will importing the cache file, DWS format. Right. So this line is a uh, DTS S line and the uh, overlap circle is a uh, shaft and this box also a shaft. I will call this uh, box shaft <coughs> called a middle shaft and here the circle is a right shaft and here is a left shaft and the short lines are block board. So I will make those lines uh, Move, move to exact level. So I'm using translate function. And first I will select the DTSS line, the curved line. And select the directions and copy. And give uh, exact depth. Okay. And I will delete the meaningless line. And next, I will move uh, this middle shaft to the exact level and select directions and copy. Okay. So I will delete meaning this part. Okay, and I will hide others uh, without the report. And I will copy uh, the, those rockboard lines to eject levels. Translate function again. And select the lines for the rockboard. And select directions. and change the geometry set name. 
RB. And this function is preview function. Then you can check whether it is okay or not. All right. And I will delete a uh, menu list part again. Uh, so when you assign some geometry or creating some geometry, you can check under this geometry tree here and you can hide and show just clicking. Okay. And first I will create the DTSS toner, the solid first. So I will move the work plane to XJ plane like this and go to front view and create soccer and give a radius and change your geometry set geometry set dash one okay and for the tunnels you can use the sweep function here uh, you can draw the curved tunnel with the GTS NX using this function, sweep. So just check, make a solid, and select target object, this soccer one, and change to the edge. And select guideline here. And I will give the name DTSS. Apply. Uh, so next, uh, I will create a solid for the shaft part. So I will hide DTSS and I will delete the meaningless part. Okay. Uh, so now I'm using the extrude function to create a solid and change the select method here, edge and select edge and select the directions here. So I will hide this grid, it is so confused. And select the direction, the jet. <clears throat> and I will check reserve direction and give the ranks. And give the name, middle shaft, and preview, then it is okay. Then apply. And the next part, the right shaft here, and change the selection method to edge and select the directions. Check on the reserve directions here. And give the depth. And change the geometry set name. Right shaft. Apply. And left shaft also, and change the Selection method to edge and select the directions. And give the depth. And change the ge geometry set name, left shop. Apply. Okay, so there are DTSS tunnels with a solid and there are shaft with a solid. And next, I will create the ground with a solid. So using extrude function again, and select the edges here, yeah. and select the directions. And I will assume the depth is 100, and give the name ground. 
Okay. So I, for, uh, so far I created the solid for the ground and the shaft part and DTSS tunnels. But as you can see here, uh, when I hide the shaft part, there is nothing. That means it they are overlapping. So you need to use the uh, auto connections and select or the control A. Okay. When you use uh, after use uh, auto connections, then if you hide this one, then they are connected each other. So normally you need to use a uh, auto connection when you finish to create the solid a part of the shaft, especially for the excavation. And if you are not using this auto connection, then when you create, when you generate the mesh, there will be some problem. Okay. So the next, uh, I will create the uh, soil layers with the face. So I will hide every solid and show this geometry set. And I will delete, meaning it's part. And go to top view. And I will create the face using make face function. Okay. And I will choose uh, geometry set dash one for the geometry set. And I'm using scale. Oh, if you want to cut the solid with a face, the face will be bigger, have to be bigger than the solid face. So I will increase this uh, faces. So select object. And you need to key in the scale center, and you can directly see the center point under the property window here. So I will type this thing. And I will increase around 1.2. Okay. Preview, apply. Okay. So next, uh, I will copy this to the soil layer level. So using translate again, and select this face, and select directions, and copy, and give the levels. And I will give the geometry set name, soil layer. Okay. So I will hide these things and I will show every solid to cut the soil layer with these paces. So uh, you can cut the solid with a face using this function, the divide the solid. So select the target solid, select O, control A, and select two faces these two faces, okay. And I will change the geometry set to ground, apply, okay. As you can see here, the solid has divided by the faces, those faces, okay. So height. I will move to exact geometry. Okay. So the next, uh, I will create the face for the excavation layer. It's the uh, same way with the uh, soil layer. So I will hide ground and I will show grid and move the work plane 
to x y and go to top view and create the rectangular with the face and move the geometry set dash one uh, i will create the face like this okay and I will copy this uh, face to excavation reverse. Uh, so in this case, uh, the excavation depth is 1.5 meter. So using translate function again, and select these faces, and select the direction, and copy the uniform, minus 1.5, 31. I will give the name excavation layer. And apply. Okay. So the next, I will cut the solid, the, the shaft part, which I need to excavate <coughs> with the excavation layer. So I will cut the solid uh, one by one. So using divide solid function again, and select target solid. Control A, select all, and select two surfaces here. And I will check off this delete tool because I will use th those faces later again. So I will choose this geometry set to middle shaft, apply. And the right shaft, also same. and check off, select right shaft, apply, and left part as well, okay. So after that, as you can see here, the solids has divided uh, according to the excavation depth. But in here, you can't see the lines according to the excavation level, so. Uh, we need to do the auto connect again. <coughs> and select all. Okay. And when I hide the shaft part, so there are lines according to the excavation levels. Uh, it is uh, maybe a effect to the generating mesh. Okay. So the next, uh, I will copy the rock board to the exact level using the translate function again and select block board. It's a two meter spacing for the depth. And select block board, geometry set, apply. And this one also. Okay. So now I'm finished to create the geometry for this uh, shaft excavation case. So the next step is uh, generate mesh. <clears throat> So uh, I will use uh, geometry what I made before. So for the generate the mesh, uh, you need to generate the mesh for the create a critical part first. Uh, in this case, 
the TSS part is uh, more critical because uh, we need to, I need to do some impact assessment for this DTSS. So I will create the mesh set for this DTSS uh, with small size. So selection method to change solid and select DTSS part and right click and generate mesh. And I will give a size of one meter for this DTSS. And I will give the name DTSS. Uh, you can change the properties under this step, but I will change later after create the mesh. Okay, apply. And next, uh, I, will I will generate a mesh for the left side sh shaft first. So I will select the solid nearby DTSS and I will generate the mesh with the same size of DTSS, one meter. And I will change the mesh set name. Apply. And rest part of the shaft, I will change the size, <coughs> size of two meter. Okay, for the left side. And right side, give the mesh set name. and middle side. And next, I will generate the mesh for the ground. And I'm using the size uh, used automatically by this, this GTS NX program. And when you click this one, when you click here, then GTS NX will give you the, the size of the mesh automatically. So I will change the mesh set name as a brown. Okay. And after that, uh, before before you create the structure mesh, uh, I will assign the property, the layer by layer. So under the mesh tab, uh, under the element and parameters, you can change the parameters means the uh, properties. Change the property and select object, and I will change to element and select first layer every layer uh, every things from the first layer and I will change the property to fill apply and next part here it's a g5 Apply. Okay. So uh, you can verify the property when you assigned under the property window here. And property and material you can verify under here. And this is a fill layer. And this is the G5. And this is the G1. Okay. So uh, when you generate the mesh, you can find the created mesh under the mesh tree here. And you can hide and show also. And I will hide every meshes 
for creating SVP, the retaining wall first. So I need to show right and left side of shaft. And I need to create the retaining wall for the outside of faces here. So I, I will use a extract function to create the retaining wall and change the type to face. And I will check on this front selection only and select here, select, select the outside, every outside, okay, I did select it every outside and need to change the property to SVP, the retaining wall. And I will give message name, SVP, apply. Okay. And when you hide the solid, you can see the generated mesh for the retaining wall, like this. Okay. And next, uh, I will generate the mesh for the casing at the middle part here. So, I will use extract function again for the this uh, case of mid part. So change the type to face and case in 1.2 meter and give the name middle case in dash one. So the case will be installed uh, stage by stage uh, according to the excavation depth. So I need to generate a mesh for the each layer. So apply, and second, and third, and fourth. So uh, it is a repetitive work, so I will skip. Maybe the case middle case will be insert until around here, maybe 18th. So I will skip. Okay, I will hide solid. It's all right, this. Okay, I will show you later the ability ones. Okay, and I need to create the shark grid for the shaft from middle part here. So, extract function again and change to face for the type. And I will select face for the shark grid under the middle shaft. And I already created for the shaft, the shark grid. The middle shark grid, dash one, apply, and two, three and four. And I will skip this one also. Uh, I need to create this uh, middle shark grid until the FER level, stage by stage, one by one. Okay. This is the shape of the structures. Maybe this one, middle casing will be created until the reverse, what I desire, and this one as well, until the FVR. But I, oh, I will skip. And the next, uh, I will create the rock board using the 1D generation. And this is the truss. So I can give division with one here and RB dash one for first layer and second, third, and fourth. 
So others also I need to create, but I will skip. Okay. So uh, the next, uh, I will show you the merging part for the excavation. So uh, the excavation will be carried out the layer by layer. So I didn't delete uh, this excavation layer. So if you can't uh, distinguish easily to verify the excavation layer, then you just show this excavation layer and just select the part. So I will merge for the first excavation part and select those meshes, this one and this one, and right click merge and when you select this uh, mesh set under the mesh tree you can directly find highlight it here okay so you can change the name of this uh, mesh set using press f f2 from your keyboard and this one is excavation one okay And I will select the second excavation part and merge and find the mesh set and change the name excavation two and I will hide to easily check and select third part and merge and select and change the name. Okay, so <clears throat> I need to merge the excavation part, uh, the level by level, but it is repeated work, so I will skip. And the next, uh, I will create the interface for the SVP work. So I need to show the SVP only. And you can create the interface for the retaining work using interface function here under the mesh tab element interface and go to plain tab and select the type from share and select the elements you need to select all so control a and check merge node and select the rear of retaining wall here select the point like this and i will use the wizard for property parameters and for the strong strength reduction factor i will use uh, 0.67 uh, it is normally using in Singapore. So, okay. And I will create a rigid ring and give the name SVP interface. Okay. Okay. And next, uh, I will create the case. In uh, which is uh, combined with uh, SVP, level by level. <coughs> uh, so after the first excavation, we need to install the case in for the first excavation, this layer. So I will show this excavation layer again. Okay. So this SVP will be combined with the uh, case, uh, which is size of 0 0.75 after the first excavation. So I will hide this mid case. 
And I will use a property, uh, change the property function. It's a boundary condition. You can find this change property under static slope analysis tab uh, under the boundary. And I will use SVP plus casing. Dash one. And select the element for the first casing. Apply. And second. Apply. And third. Apply. And I will skip the rest part. Okay. <laughs> And after you uh, generate the mesh, then you need to create the boundary conditions for the outline of the ground. So using this constraint function, and go to auto, and change the boundary set name. Normally I'm using BC, okay. This is a boundary condition for the ground, and next, you need to create the gravity condition, self-weight. Normally, I'm using the SW for the low stand name. Okay. So uh, now I'm finished the geometry and generate the mesh. So I will open the files what I created. So this is a mesh set until the excavation 31. And I will hide the ground. Uh, this is the Shakrit, and this is the SVP, and this is the DTSS. So after this, uh, you need to create the construction stage. So under this analysis tab, uh, you can see the stage set and uh, right click on this stage set uh, add construction set and give some name excavation and i will use a stress stage time in this case you can choose others for your project and add and double click this one and you can activate and deactivate uh, with this window for your construction stage. So I will show everything first, every meshes. Okay, so I will change the show data to activate data only. So there is empty because I didn't activate anything. So I will activate, then you can see the activated data so at the initial pace, I will change the stage name first. Uh, you need to activate every soil uh, without the structural part. Just make a pure condition of the site without any structure. And you need to activate boundary condition also for the ground and separate. And if you create the <clears throat> interface, you need to activate rigid link from first initial phase. Okay. So I will check on the clear displacement for initial phase. Okay, save. And click this one, then you can create the next step. And you can verify the steps under here. Okay, and you can move the other stages. And next stage is DTSS, uh, considering the DTSS tunnels. So I will deactivate the solid for the DTSS here, make the hole, and activate the DTSS cover. <laughs> And I will check on the clear displacement again. Uh, this one is 
uh, depends on the engineering judgment. Normally, I do the clear displacement until the insert SPP, the retaining wall. So the next step is the uh, retaining wall step. So activate the retaining wall and interface. And when you activate this interface, you don't need to remain the rigid ring. So I will deactivate rigid ring and clear the displacement again, save. And next step, I will start to the excavation. So excavation one. <clears throat> so deactivate this uh, excavation one mesh and it will be deactivated. Save. And next step is uh, install the caisson. So I will activate the first layer of the caisson. And this is the material change, the boundary condition. Save. And next is second excavation. So you need to deactivate EX2 mesh set and click new for next stage and c2 case in second case in. and activate the case in for the second layer and svp save and excavation three and deactivate the excavation three and activate the caisson. So uh, in this case, if you make the same number for the caisson and excavation, something like this, then uh, you can easily find the deactivated data and activated data. So I will skip the rest part it is, uh, there are 65 steps, so I will skip it. Okay, so after you make the stage set, you can directly see under here, the stage set three. <clears throat> so the next, uh, you need to create the analysis case. And right click on the analysis case and click add and give some name, excavation. And I will choose a uh, construction stage for the solution type. Okay, so uh, I already created the stage set then. So I'm using the construction stage. And if you create the uh, more stage set under here, then you can choose the stage set, what you created under here, okay. So go to analysis control. And I will assume the k naught condition for the initial stage. So I will check uh, under the initial stage, this one, and apply k naught condition. So this condition is a k naught condition for the initial phase. So I will click OK. Uh, before that, uh, under the nonlinear tab, uh, you can control the error tolerance under here. And you can give some numbers for the error tolerance. Okay. Okay. So uh, when you create the analysis case, you can see the created analysis case under here and right click on here, then you can find the solve and you can perform the analysis uh, click with clicking this solve. So uh, it's a uh, take a bit long time. So I will skip the performing the analysis.
Okay, so this case uh, contains around uh, 795,000 nodes and 65 steps to perform the analysis. Uh, at the left, uh, left hand side, uh, you can see my PCS condition here. And GTS NS prepared to use a NVIDIA graphic card for reducing the analysis time. So with my PC condition, I can finish the analysis within one hour, 30 minutes. And based on the feedback from our users, uh, we could have realized that uh, this analysis speed is very faster comparing with other analysis software. So uh, I will show you the result. Okay, this is the uh, what I create, created before. So as you can see here, there are 65 steps for the construction stage. Okay, so when you finish the analysis, uh, you can see the result under the result tab here. And you can see the every construction stage under this uh, analysis case three and I will see under the last stage uh, when you double click this one then you can see the displacement and reactions and forces and stress and others so especially for the displacement uh, when you double click this, then you can open the tree and total displacement, and x directions, y direction, z direction. Okay. This x, y, z is following this coordinate system. Okay. So if we want to see the displacement from ground only, then go to model tab and open the mesh set, hide every mesh and only show the ground. Then you can see the result from ground only like this. And if you want to see the different steps, the construction stage, then you can verify the construction stage under here and you can move the stage with this function and using your keyboard, the arrow, as you can see here, the stage has changed. And you can directly change the unit system under here. And I will change to millimeter. Then you can directly see with the millimeter unit for the displacement. And if we want to see the forces from SBP, then hide everything and only show the SBP. And now, now it's a displacement. And go to shell element forces because uh, I created this retaining wall with the shell element. So you can check membrane forces and bending moment. And shear force. Okay, so I will show you some special things uh, for the result from GTS NX. And you can cut uh, this uh, 3D models, uh, something like 2D, using this one. <clears throat> 
clipping plane. And you can move directly with this function with your mouse. And you can change the directions. And jet also like this. Okay. And I will choose uh, this Y direction and close. And I will hide this mesh lines. No edge. And you can control the smooth of this contour using this one. Smooth function, continuous or fringe like this. And you can hide this region just click, value, contour line, okay? And if we want to see the result of the, uh, this face, then go to others, 3D to 2D wizard. Then you can see some white point, uh, these points under the, this face, the nose, the white points are the nose, under this face. So you just click the nose, then you can verify the values. I will hide this one and clear or, or if we want to see the maximum value under this face, you just click maximum under here and minimum. Okay. And also, uh, you can draw some diagram for the ground settlement. Uh, if we want to see the all 3D model, then you just click this one. And I will show the mesh edge. Okay. And you can draw the diagram with uh, this function, on curve diagram function, and just select the two point or you can give some coordinate system or point starting point and end point and you can increase the division and I'll, i will show you later and now i'm choosing the 20 and preview it's a total displacement okay and apply and under this created uh, diagram, uh, when you right click on this diagram, then you can see the edit, delete, and short table. And when you click the short table, you can see the values under that 20 point with the uh, XYZ coordinate system, like this. And if you increase the division around 13, and when you show the table, the table will specify with a 30. With the coordinating system here. Okay, so the next, uh, you also verify the action force of the rapport. So just to show the rapport only here and go to trust element forces and action force and check value. And you can verify the action force on the from the rapport. And if we want to see just one Result from one report, then just click this report and show. <clears throat> okay.
So uh, today I have presented the case study of shaft excavation uh, based on the project of CPG consultant in Singapore. Uh, I cannot say it is easy to carry out the 3D analysis, uh, but I would like to help you uh, be confident in 3D analysis uh, because we can do economical design uh, with a 3D by avo av avoiding the conservative design. And I hope that uh, this webinar session could be a good chance to be more familiar with 3D analysis than before. And if you don't have GTS NX program, uh, you can send us the trial request to improve your analysis skill. Uh, we will be able to provide two weeks trial uh, for today's webinar attendees. And my team can help you to get more knowledge about numerical analysis. And I will continuously organize the series of case study webinar sessions. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the future sessions. Uh, don't miss the next training. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so see you next time.